In this video, I want to talk about the five cons of living in San Francisco. Most of my videos talk about all the great perks and all the positive, amazing things and reasons why you should move to and live in San Francisco, but it's not for everyone. There's a lot of cons. I want to go over the major ones. And the first one is going to be the crime rate. Okay. So looking at us cities by crime rate, these are the hundred biggest cities. Yeah. So 8 million, New York, all the way down to, so cities with a population of 200,000 or more. And it's got the top hundred. So let's see where San Francisco is on these. Let's look at this one here. I don't want to say these words on YouTube. So St. Louis, Missouri, number one, Baltimore, number two in these M things. And let's see where San Francisco rates. Cause there's a lot of crime in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Oh, there we go. 66. So just below average in San Francisco. And that's how the violent crime is. Here's the, here's this R word here. Let's see where San Francisco is on that. I pass it up. There it is. 68. So below average on that one too. So yeah, violent crime's pretty low relative to big cities, but let's look at property crime. Those that's where San Francisco's really bad. All right. Burglary, Cleveland, Memphis, Baton Rouge, Tulsa, let's see where San Francisco is. There we go. 55. So right about average for major cities and larceny theft. Number two car break-ins were a really big one. So as you can see, the violent crime rates are pretty low. If you're used to living in a big city, now you put this up against small town, Midwest, suburbia, USA, it's probably gonna be a lot different. I'm only gonna compare San Francisco to the uh, hundred biggest cities in the U S you can see it's below average, right around average. It's the property crime. The car break-ins were insane. San Francisco PD, the mayor, they're finally starting to do something. So those numbers are going down a lot. Also the Supreme court ruling that allowed cities to clear tents and encampments off of sidewalks, um, really was a game changer. And so Southern California, I've seen a lot being done and also in San Francisco to remove a lot of those encampments. So I do think that a lot of this property crime is going down, but you can see it's up there pretty high larceny or theft was about average, but it was the, like the car break-ins, those numbers just shot us up to num the number two overall violent crime though, overall average or a little bit below average. Number two, I want to talk about cost of living. San Francisco is very expensive to live in. Quality of life is very high, but cost of living is very high as well. So if you're not coming here to San Francisco with a great income, you don't have a great job waiting for you. Or if you don't like living in larger cities, you'd rather just be tucked away in a sleepy Midwest suburb, then it's not going to be for you anyway. But if you're coming here because you've got a really good salary, and you really want to live in a city that has so much to offer, meaning that you appreciate the increase in quality of life, then here's some data that you want to look at. So we're taking the 50 largest metropolitan areas and they have San Francisco broken down as San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley. They don't have the South Bay on here. That's its own area. So right now we're the 12th largest. And so let's take a look at income. Income, we're number two. South Bay is number one and we're number two. If you're making over six figures here, then you should consider moving here based on the data. But regardless of what your income is, it's the second most expensive place to live in the U S behind the South Bay, but let's rank it here based on income. There we go. And it's still number two. So if you don't have a really good salary that you're looking forward to moving here, then San Francisco might not be for you. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is once you get into the job market out here, if you really have confidence in yourself and you're really investing in yourself. And this is a work hard, play hard community, which I'll talk about in a minute here. So if you're not really willing to grind and work your way up, if you're starting a little bit lower on the salary end, it's going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit more difficult. But if you're really confident in yourself that you can really increase your, your salary and really enjoy what San Francisco and the Bay area have to offer, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But if you're just casually want to work your eight hours a day and go enjoy your life. The cost of living here is going to be a pretty big con. Third one I want to talk about is it is a work hard, play hard community out here. There's so much amazing stuff to do, but people don't really take advantage of it on a daily basis. Holidays, weekends, summer and winter break are jam packed with people leaving, going and doing all the things. We've got Napa, we've got Sonoma right nearby an hour away. You're four hours away from Tahoe, from the snow, you're a one-way flight, five-hour one-way flight to Hawaii, Southern California, Central Valley. There's just so much to do here. We're so close to so many things and we've got a major airport here. So you've got 
one-way tickets all over the world, but people still do work a lot here. It is a grind. So there's that kind of that duality in it where you don't have a lot of people that just clock out at five o'clock and the world doesn't just start right back up at 9 a.m. It's constant. Before I got into real estate, I worked at the Facebook headquarters. It's now meta, but back then it was just Facebook. And that's where I really got a crash course in what it takes to be successful in the tech industry. You have to be on your phone seven days a week, always checking your messages, always checking your email, staying on top of everything. And fortunately for me though, I brought that into real estate. So I'm a little bit of a different realtor. This isn't what I've always done. I've only been doing this for five years now, but your traditional old school realtor there, they, I've heard horror stories where it takes a couple of days for someone to get back to a text or an email. And I'm just like OCD, like I'm just, I'm still like fully into that tech culture. Most of my clients are tech here. I do get a lot of people that reach out to me from YouTube and TikTok that are coming into San Francisco. Um, but my bread and butter are the folks that were just like me, just tech workers. I want to get back to this, but I just want to say I'm sucked into the Bay area, work hard, play hard culture myself. I love it. I would have it no other way. Um, and if that's not you, if you want to just turn off your phone at five o'clock every night. That's going to be a pretty big con to move here to San Francisco. Number four is it's very busy. This is a seven mile by seven mile radius city. That's got almost 900,000 people in it, just under a million. So it is very busy. The roads are busy. The streets are busy. Every time of the day is going to be busy. There's people everywhere. Now we have a lot of suburban type neighborhoods that are very chill, but they're not extremely walkable. You're going to have to drive to, to get somewhere to get to all the amenities. A uh, walk score is a great tool. I like to show my clients where if you're living in Pacific Heights or the Marina, you could have a 95 to a 99 walk score. But if you want to be more tucked away, Twin Peaks or Diamond Heights, it'll have maybe a 65 or 75 walk score, meaning there's going to be some corner stores and some coffee shops. But if you want to get around and go around to everything where you have dozens and dozens of options within a two block walk, that those aren't the neighborhoods for you. And then they have some middle ground neighborhoods, Sunset Neighborhoods of Richmond. You've got a lot of great amenities there and it still feels like a neighborhood, but it's also still busy. So there's all different types of neighborhoods to, to choose from. And if you're not already from San Francisco and you haven't already been living here for a few years, it's really important for you to acclimate and learn these neighborhoods. I do a lot of driving tours with folks from out of town, clients from Australia and New York and overseas. I had those three clients in my car driving around within the last few months, showing them homes. And more importantly than the homes though, showing them in the neighborhoods, don't want to focus much on what's inside those four walls before you understand the neighborhoods first, because that building, those four walls, that, that house, if you move it from neighborhood one to neighborhood two, it could go up from a million dollars to $10 million and not even exaggerating. It's all about location. So you really want to understand those neighborhoods. I've got some neighborhood walkthrough videos where I kind of show some of the overall overarching areas, but. The best way for you to understand the neighborhoods is jump on a call or a zoom with me. Let me know your uh, wants, your needs, what you don't want to be near, what you do want to be near. And then I can explain what neighborhoods have that, which ones should be your primary ones to go and check out and which ones you should really avoid and why. So you got a real good understanding of it. And then I put together, I can put together like a really good, like scavenger hunt kind of tour map, or I can host it myself. We can all jump in my car kind of cruise around so you can see all those areas overall though. If you're not used to a busy packed scene, then moving to San Francisco is going to be a con. And the fifth and final major con in San Francisco is you're going to need to be okay with public transportation. If you're a car or nothing type person, your day to day is going to be a little more difficult than anyone else. If you're not willing to take a bike or walk or take a train or a trolley or the BART or the Caltrans, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you. If you're coming in here to rent. Parking is not a guarantee. If you're coming in here to buy property, usually when you get to the two bedroom level, there's 95% of the properties are going to have parking one bedroom, maybe 50 to 75% of the homes. And if you look at studios, it's going to be less than half of them are going to have parking. You're going to have to look for street parking. Street parking is not easy. Garage sizes are not easy. If you've got a large full-size SUV or a classic car, you're going to have not only a tough time parking it in your garage and, or parking in your parking spot, but just getting around town, very small, tight one-way streets. Um, the, the parallel parking is going to be difficult. So if you are really locked into your car, this is the only way I want to get around, then moving to San Francisco might be a con. That's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below 
or call me, text me, email me. All my information is in the description below. The most popular way people get a hold of me is they click on my calendar link and set some time for a Zoom one-on-one consultation. Thank you for watching the video all the way through, and I hope to hear from you soon.